to three row luxury SUVs. Finally, Lexus is in the game, and this actually is probably the Lexus to buy. This is the 2024 Lexus TX. Now, we are in awesome Austin, Texas, but that is not why Lexus called this the TX. It actually fits in their naming protocol. So RX, NX, LX, GX, and finally the TX. The TX has a starting price of about $55,000. The F Sport Edition tops out at about $77,000. And later this year, there will be a plug-in electric hybrid in the TX lineup. Inside, it is the largest Lexus there is. Honestly, even though the LX is bigger on the outside, this one is bigger on the inside. It's been designed to accommodate child passenger car seats. In fact, you can fit two rear-facing child passenger car seats. I'm gonna show you what that looks like. And there's room in the third row for real-sized human beings, not tiny little ones. So you need to put somebody back there who doesn't really love the third row they're not gonna to be totally unhappy in the rear of the Lexus TX. So come with me. I wanna show you some details on the outside that are interesting to note about this brand new car from Lexus. And then I'll take you on a tour inside and I'll show you how the child passenger car seats fit. So come on with me. I wanna show you, first of all, look at the size of this car. So I'm 5'8". This is a tall car. If you need to put things on the roof, you're gonna need a step stool or you can step on the threshold, but you're gonna need help because it is, this is tall, but that's where you get all that headroom. And then there it is wide. So look how wide these doors are. They do open nice and wide for installing uh, car seats and for gaining access to the third row. On the front of the Lexus TX though, is probably the most interesting part of the exterior. And that is, it's got this very flat front and it is body colored. So you don't have a black mesh grill. You don't have that, you know, very dramatic hourglass shape that you have on other Lexus models. This one is really low key. A lot of Lexus fans are gonna be thrilled about this because as much as people love so many other features on Lexus, that grill, has been a little controversial over the years. Hopefully this will be less so. I also want you to notice these headlights. They're really thin and that is because we're seeing headlights on all cars become thinner and thinner these days. You don't really need all of that real estate for lights anymore. So they've made them sort of thin and uh, I think of them as sort of steely eyed, but still very bright and do the job great. And then we have some lower details here, uh, fog light and some air intakes there. Then let's walk around the back because I wanna show you what you're gonna see on the rear of the Lexus TX. So this one has 22 inch wheels, by the way. Uh, 20 inch wheels are standard on the Lexus TX, so you get big or bigger. This is the F Sport Edition. What you'll see back here are all new taillights. It's actually a light bar with the Lexus badge here. And then here we can see it's uh, TX 500H. H designates that it's a hybrid, so this one gets about 28 mpg, which is great for a three-row SUV with this much space. And in the cargo area, what's notable here, 20 cubic feet of cargo space. So Lexus says you can get seven suitcases in here I'm skeptical about that, but that's what they say, and I trust them, I'm sure that they tried it. So the rollerboard kind that fit in the overhead compartment, seven of those. And then underneath here, there is a place to store your cargo cover, so you can just pop that right in there. There is a uh, tire kit for a jack to, uh, if you need to jack up the car to replace the tire. And then underneath this little storage bin, is actually a temporary spare tire. So you do get a spare tire with the Lexus TX, which is a nice thing if it's one of those days or one of those places where you get a flat tire or damage to your tire and you don't have another option, it's great to have a spare with you. Now in this version, these seats will uh, fold down automatically by pushing the button. So you just push the button and there they go. And notice how they drop the headrest too. So their push button in this model, other models have a tab that you 
pull to uh, drop the rear seats. When you drop these rear seats, you get 57 cubic feet of cargo space. That's pretty incredible. If you put the center seats down, that goes to almost 100 cubic feet of cargo space. So not probably and wide enough to carry some things, but if you need tables, you need chairs, small furniture, uh, or just if you don't need the third row for hockey bags and things like that, you have a lot of space, which is a really great thing. And you have this electric door closer. So it's nice to be able to push the button just to, to close the door. But let's take a look on the interior of the Lexus TX and see what you get in the front and center rows. Inside the TX, there are a lot of great features for drivers. Now, we are in the F Sport edition. It's pretty fully loaded. It has almost everything you can think of that Lexus offers in its cars. It starts with this really beautiful birch colored interior. I love these uh, dual tone seats, These uh, uh, the light color here, and then the back of the seat and the flooring is all dark. And then there's this really pretty micro suede here. So lots of nice little accents that give it a really luxurious, but also a sporty feel. From the uh, driver's seat, there are some great features. So first of all, there is this. Look at that. When you swipe your finger around the pad, the image changes in the head-up display to show you the function that you're touching. So you can change the radio station, you can follow navigation, you can get voice control, whatever it is you need, just by swiping here. You can even set your driver assist features, adaptive cruise control, and things like that just by swiping your finger here to find that and then push the button. There also are controls here to allow you to customize your driver information screen. So see what you want to see. You can set it up so that the information that you need to see is right there in front of you. And then there's this large 14 inch screen. I love this. It's standard in every single model. And this is actually the new multimedia system that Lexus rolled out not too long ago. I think maybe about a year and a half or so ago. And it does this. Hey, Lexus. How can I help you? Isn't that great? So you can just tap the X to cancel it, um, but it will set navigation. It will uh, change the climate temperature. It'll set the temperature in the cabin. You can change the radio station. You can do a lot of things with this. Notable about the system though, it is by subscription. So Lexus gives you a three year subscription. And after that, you do have to subscribe to not all of it, but some of it. Uh, navigation and some other features, premium features, are by sub, uh, subscription only. So keep that in mind that if you want to keep doing using this great system, you're going to get used to it. You're going to have to pay for it down the road. Some other features that we have here, um, we have a surround view camera and I love this surround view camera. In fact, I think every car should have a surround view camera and to be able to pick your view um, and be able to see in front of the car because even though you don't really look at the hood from the driver's seat, it is a large car and you're not gonna be able to see people or things immediately in front of the car. So that surround view camera with the forward view is really great. And then there is our um, park assist feature here. So it has automatic self parking. And I'm gonna to try to show that to you because that's one of my favorite features in Lexus vehicles. We don't want parallel. So I'm going to start. You take your foot off the brake. The car moves forward. It finds a parking spot. It will show you the parking spot here on the rearview camera, and it will outline it there in blue. So you can see there, and you can see what it's doing. And I am hands-free, and it's going to back up a little bit, and then it's going to pull into that parking spot in front of us. So you can see there, and I'm hoping it doesn't hit that car, but no, we're good. <laughs> we are good. And now it's going to straighten up the wheel and it's gonna pull straight into that parking spot. Now you might say, what the heck do you need this for? Well, it's really good if it's a tight spot, parallel parking, which it also does. Um, if you have a situation where parking is not the easiest thing, maybe uh, not full use of a hand or not able to fully turn around to see when backing up, which are you know common, common things. I know people who can't fully turn and you can have the car do the hard job for you. Underneath the Lexus, I actually have 
a view. Since I backed up, mm -hmm. there's a camera here and it actually shows me what is underneath that car, underneath this car. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? So there are a number of functions here. Uh, that give you lots of options. They made it very simple, so there's not really a home screen. You just pick what you want from this menu over here. Climate control is here. It's all part of the screen, but these are fixed controls, so they're not gonna go away if you uh, select something else on this screen. You can control the front and rear climate from here, which is really nice. And heated and vented seats are standard in the TX, all trim levels, so that's a great thing. Down here we have a uh, wireless charge pad, and then we can actually tuck that away if we don't want to see it. There is another little cubby down there. So you want to hide something, leave, you know, something of value in there, and who would ever know that it's there? And then we have these cup holders, and I love this they pop out. So you spill something really gross in there, you could take it out and give it a really good cleaning. It even has little rubber um, liners that pop out. So you can keep your um, cup holders nice and clean and pristine. And you can leave them in here or you can take them out and just have this entire space. And in fact, this little, this little space here, um, it's all contiguous. So you're able to, you could put a handbag in here. You could put a lot of things in here. So you could put a nice sized handbag right in this space if it's not too big, like a crossbody or something like that, would fit right in here if you take the cup holders out. So that's a nice thing. And then it has this. And this is what I think of as the nice neighbor feature. And that is if I'm leaning on my armrest, my neighbor can open her armrest without disturbing me. And isn't that considerate? So they designed these armrests to have in this butterfly open shape ex expressly for that. So whoever's sitting in one side can open their armrest without disturbing the arm of the other person. I thought that was really nice. Maybe we'll call that like a peacekeeper, um, sort of like uh, his and her closets, right? And I think that's a good thing. Over here, we have the uh, traction control, brake hold, my favorite feature, because you just tap that and then the brake holds. Our all wheel drive modes are here and then there's the parking brake. So lots of options and there's actually also a drive mode. You can pick your drive mode over here as well. So here are your normal sport eco and custom, but if you really need that off-road, uh, capability instantly there is a button for that so some of these features that we have here we also see in the second row and let's go take a look at that rear seat passengers are going to be spoiled too so first of all they get this beautiful uh, luxury interior they have window shades now they're manual so they're not electric but it's better because they are not going to break and you can't pour a drink in it the way you can the electric one. So, um, so it's probably actually better, but it's nice to have those window shades. I love them for my dog because I can roll the window down, the shade is up, he still can't put his head out the window, but he gets the wind in his face. So that's a nice feature. And then here are some of the spoilers for second row passengers. So we have our own climate control here. We have two USB ports, so one for each seat. There also is a household outlet right there. And then these seats, um, they recline, they move forward and back, and then they also recline, which I will show you, like that. So you're able to actually rec recline quite a lot uh, if you want to take a nap or make your car seat installation a little bit tighter. That's a nice thing. And then there is this. So those cup holders that we had in the front, we also have them back here. And you can take them out, uh, or you can leave them there, or you can take out the entire thing. So this is an innovation that Toyota came up with in the Grand Highlander. They included it in the Lexus as well. And that gets a big yay from me. Now, the idea is that you can take this out to create a greater pass through to access the third row, but it's not really necessary because it's not very big. It's gonna be pretty easy to climb over. So I can see where you probably don't really want or need to take it out. You probably just leave it right in, right there just like that and it just pops right in it's so easy 
So there are vents on the ceiling here, dome lights, panoramics, roof, uh, sunroof, covers the first and second rows, but not the third row, but there are nice big windows in the third row for third row passengers. So they're not gonna feel super isolated back there because they don't have a panoramic sunroof, but they, they do have plenty of light. So let's hop in the third row and see what that looks like. So to get into the third row, you can use the pass through, which is super easy, or you can push this button on the back of the, uh, on the shoulder of the seat, or you can pull the lever on the side of the seat and climb in that way. A nice little handhold there, so it's easy to climb in and pull the seat back. So the third row and the second row do have their own climate control. So you can turn on the vents, their air vents for the third row back here. There are cup holders. It's a really big space. You can actually put a tablet there and position it so you can watch it. Um, and there's uh, cup holders. It's not the, not the removable ones, but nice cup holders. And then there is a USB port on either side for third row passengers. Now, we're in the F Sport, so this is top of the line, and it has this. There are push buttons. We saw them in the back, and there are push buttons here also on this side panel for lowering the seats. So you can lower or put the seats back or recline them. Isn't that lovely? And so I'll also point out that there is a fair amount of legroom here. So now when I put this seat up, it didn't pull all the way back. Um, if your second row passenger is not super tall, then you actually can leave quite a lot of legroom for the third row passengers. And I like personally the pass through because it leaves a more open feeling to the cabin. The Lexus TX seats six or seven passengers. To seat seven, you need the second row bench. And the bench is very convenient. It does have some great options for getting into the third row. I'm gonna show you what that looks like. So first of all, note that the TX has an almost flat floor. It's not quite, but almost flat. There's no big hump here in the middle, which makes seating a passenger here in the center seat not completely uncomfortable. They'll be, you know, maybe a little tight because the center seat's never the fun place to sit, but there is room. And then there is a pull down armrest and cup holder here in the center. So you do have this option if you don't need somebody to sit in the center seat all the time. Can you fit a baby uh, seat here? Yes, you probably can. We don't have lower anchors for the center seat. You only have them in the outboard seats in the center bench, but you do have a nice wide space so you could probably fit the base for an infant seat or a very thin child passenger car seat here in the middle. The bench is available on the base model of the 350 and it's an option on the others. So you can have your choice of captain's chairs or a bench depending on whichever it is that you like. Looking around this model, we're in the 350 and this is the base standard Lexus TX. Now I'm gonna show you what it's like to get into the third row when you have the second row bench and the only way to get into the third row is by uh, sliding and tilting these outboard seats. Let me show you. So there are two ways to slide and tilt these center row seats. Um, one is by pushing the button on the shoulder of the seat, or you can pull this lever uh, at the bottom of the seat. If you're going to slide and tilt the seat with a child passenger car seat installed, use the lever, not the button. The button will not work. There's a handhold here, and then you can hold on here to climb in. It's a pretty wide space here for accessing the third row, so I do appreciate that. But I will also say, when you pull it all the way back, it's a pretty tight space. I can barely sit with my legs facing forward, but I can sit uh, at an angle and it's pretty comfortable. This third row bench seats two passengers and it has lower anchors on both seats. So they're in a little slot here. And so it does have two sets of lower anchors and then the uh, upper tethers for installing a child passenger car seat. So it's totally plausible to put a booster or a forward facing car seat in the uh, third row. And then there are places to put your hands. There's a grip here if you need it. So getting in and out of the third row should not be that difficult. Let's see. So not too bad. Now, let's 
and there you go. So how does the Lexus TX work with installing child passenger car seats? I'm gonna show you what the configuration looks like with rear facing and forward facing, and then two rear facing car seats, and how you best get in and out of the third row, and what your best configurations are for child passenger car seats. Before we get started, note that there are four sets of lower latches and four or five upper. There are two seats in the third row, three seats or in the middle row, or two if you have captain's chairs, we've got a bench here. And I'm gonna show you what you need to know about those push button moving seats in the Lexus TX. Let's take a look. So I have my first seat here. I have an install, latch installed here. It's not a full install because um, it's a lot of work. And I just want to show you how it looks with these car seats in here and what you need to know. So we showed you how you just push the button and the seat pushes forward, slides and tilts forward. Well, not with a car seat installed. There is a weight limitation. So when there's any weight in this chair at all, it won't work. There is a workaround. And that is you can pull this tab and move the seat forward. And then you can pull this lever here and you can push it forward slightly, but not a whole lot. It leaves you still a decent amount of space to get into the third row. So I'm going to show you what that looks like. You can still put your foot there and <laughs> you can squeeze into the third row. So it's not the most comfortable way. And this is not going to work if you have rear facing child passenger car seats. So here's what it's like when the rear facing seat is behind the passenger seat. So I moved this seat up so it's sort of at a normal position and this is how much space it takes. So I don't have my measuring tape, but this is a good probably 32 or 33 inches between seats. If you want to push the seat back, you can't. You can push it forward, but this is as far back as the seat goes is where I have it. And you can see in order to get to the um, get past this, you would have to move this seat all the way up and all the way forward. And then you only have about this much space to squeeze in between these two seats. The Britix car seat installs using a seat belt. It's a click tight, so the seat belt threads through and plugs in and it's installed. So this one has to be seat belt installed and doesn't really work, but this one has to be seat belt installed because there are no lower anchors in the center seat. And so if I did that, will I still be able to slide and tilt the seat forward? Somewhat. So if you have two really narrow car seats on the uh, passenger and middle seat in the center row, you will be able to, see I think our Britix is too big. You will be able to uh, access the third row using the, um, slide and tilt, but you can't do that with a car seat installed. So if you need two rear facing car seats, those are your choices in this car. So if you're a true Lexus fan, this is the Lexus TX that you want. This is the F Sport. So $77,000, I've got the fact sheet right here. I'm gonna tell you a few things and then we'll take a test drive. So 366 horsepower, 2.4 liter turbo, four cylinder engine four-cylinder engine and a three-row SUV. Well, it does have 366 horsepower and it can tow 5,000 pounds. So clearly Lexus has confidence in this engine. It has everything. It has all the F-Sport details. It has paddle shifters. It has the 14-inch uh, multimedia system, which is standard across all trims. So you, get, you, you can have that no matter which Lexus you get. It has wireless the uh, smartphone connectivity. It has active sound control, digital latch, so the digital door handles. It has the tech package with a panoramic sunroof. It has windshield wiper de-icer, so if you live in a cold climate, that's great. Head-up display, digital mirror right here, so I'll show you that. It has uh, all-wheel drive. It has a surround view camera, so you get that full view around the car and it has a 1500 watt household style outlet which is right here in the back of the center console 
the uh, conven convenience and technology packages, rear hatch cargo lamps, puddle lamps, which we're not going to be able to see in this bright day, all for $77,000. Now that represents a $22,000 price bump over the base model. You get a lot more Lexus for that twenty-two dollars and you should get about 28 MPG, so not terrible for a three-row SUV with 366 horsepower. That's actually quite respectable. So shall we take a ride? Let's do this. Alrighty. We are driving through a neighborhood in uh, suburban Austin, Texas. Awesome Austin, Texas. And there are a lot of hills. Speed limit's 35 miles an hour, so I'm not going to go real fast. But it's fine. It handles quite nicely. It's easy to park. I just did a U-turn. Um, that was quite easy. The, uh, it doesn't feel like a huge car, even though it is a full-size three-row SUV or they call it mid-size, but it feels bigger than that. If you ask me, um, anything with this much leg room and this much headroom, I feel like is a full size. This is the Lexus to get if you really need passengers in those three rows all the time. If you need that extra cargo space, so it's something like 57 cubic feet behind the second row. If you're going to do a lot of heavy hauling, um, lots of luggage, lots of sports gear, big hockey bags, things like that, this is a really great option. Almost top of the line is, now it sounds a little loud right here because we're driving on grooved pavement. They're about to pave this road, but it's quiet, it feels good. It's everything that you expect from a luxury three row, six or seven passenger SUV. One thing that you'll appreciate in the F-Sport is you hear that throaty engine. So it's not exactly the quiet, quietest even though it's a hybrid it is not overly loud but you do, do hear the throatiness of the engine which is very nice all right let's see what it's like to make a u-turn because this is a big car and not too bad not too bad at all so now we are in the 350 275 horsepower it is a uh, four-cylinder turbocharged engine it feels fine. It does not feel underpowered at all. 275 horsepower is maybe a little small for a three row SUV where you know you're gonna have four or five or six passengers in this car all the time. Plus the weight of things like car seats and strollers or hockey bags or lacrosse gear. All of those things are all gonna add weight. So you do wanna make sure that you have enough power if if you're really gonna fill the car with people and gear, you might wanna think about the 500, which has 366 horsepower, or the 550 Plus, which has 400 horsepower and a plug-in um, plug powertrain for 30 miles, 33 miles of all electric driving. But let's talk about how it drives outside of the power factor, and that is you don't know that you're driving a three-row SUV. It's really comfortable. Um, I do hear that motor. It's not super silent. It's not super quiet, but this is not the hybrid. This is the uh, fully gas engine, estimated to get about 23 MPG combined. I think you can get up to about 28 on the highway and more like 21 in the city. So if you're doing a lot of short little trips around town, it's not gonna be super fuel efficient. If you want fuel efficiency, then the hybrid probably is the way to go. But if you have people in all three rows um, and you're driving a luxury car, fuel economy is probably not your first thing. And if it is, then upgrade to the hybrid. So it feels really good behind the wheel of this car. We took a test drive of the Toyota Grand Highlander. How does the Lexus compare? Well, it's Lexus. It's surrounded you in these really beautiful materials. It's a little quieter, it's a little fancier, and a little more thoughtful. Lexus did a really stunning job on the very first three-row crossover, so not a full-size four-wheel drive SUV, but a definitely very large uh, three-row, six or seven passenger SUV with all-wheel drive that will get you through most of the things you need to get through, but also gives you more interior space more luxurious touches and 
that lovely Lexus experience. This is the Lexus we've been waiting for. The Lexus RXL was great to have a third row, but it wasn't a really large third row. The GX, as much as we love it for off-road capability and its beautiful boxy good looks, well, it just isn't big enough for everyone. And even the LX, which is huge and so luxurious, it's also not the best when it comes to child passenger car seats and a third row that's good for everyone. This is the Lexus to buy for those who want the Lexus experience, who need a real third row, and all the pampering that you expect in a luxury three-row family-focused SUV.